Adobe Premiere Rush is now available. So should you rush out and get it? Let's find out. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun here. This is going to be an overview of Adobe Premiere Rush, not an in-depth review. So really just a first look and how it compares to the obvious competition, LumaFusion. I like how you can easily expand the tracks and also the size of the video player. The interface is very simple, it's intuitive, it's very Adobe Premiere Pro-like, which is nice, and it's also very responsive. This is sample footage provided by Adobe. It's in the tutorial when you first open the app. I believe it's only 720p footage, but it plays back no problem. I'm using about a two-year-old iPad here, and I'm running iOS 12. There are different track views, and so in addition to expanding the video tracks, you can also expand the audio tracks. Importing media is really simple and there are many ways to do it. These clips came with the tutorial and so I loaded them in, but you could also use Dropbox, Creative Cloud, and your camera roll. This is the first time I've used this app, so I don't have it connected to Dropbox yet. And of course the camera roll, and that would include stuff you've shot on your iPhone if you're using iCloud. It'll sync between the two devices. The other way to get media into this app and it makes it unique is you can capture it with the camera. Now, this iPad camera is not the greatest, and it does have limitations, but it's nice that they offer a pro mode, an auto and a pro mode, and the pro mode has a lot of features that the built-in camera app just doesn't have. Auto exposure, you can control the shutter though, you can control the ISO, that's nice. Auto focus or manual focus, and then zoom. I would personally never use zoom, but it's a nice feature to have for those that do. Also offers a grid pattern for those that need help with the rule of thirds. And I mentioned limitations, so speaking of an iPhone, let's take a look at that very quickly. This is a screen recording from an iPhone. It's the same interface, except it has a lot more features, especially on the resolution and the frame rate. You'll notice you can shoot 4K here, up to 4K 60. I did confirm with Adobe though that the bitrate just uses the same bitrate as the native iPhone camera. That's unfortunate because shooting with higher bitrate like with Filmic Pro makes a big difference. One of the things to keep in mind of course is this is a version 1 app. A lot of the things that I'll mention here that are missing will likely be added in a future version. Adding titles reminds me a lot of Premiere Pro. I'm a Premiere Pro user and so this looks very familiar to me. These templates look like they're right out of Premiere Pro, and they have a decent selection here. You can also connect to Adobe Stock and get even more. And adding a title is pretty intuitive and straightforward. You can go in and pick the font, the color, whatever you want. and the titles play back with ease and in real time. Now, while there was a nice selection of titles, the transitions are pretty lacking. Right now, there's only a few here to choose from. A dissolve, a dip to black, and a dip to white. Now, they work fine, and for you know most basic use, they're great. Probably do a lot of cuts using this type of software anyway, but hopefully that's something they'll add to in the future. The color panel is pretty nice. It has a lot of presets built in, different film looks, black and white, different film stocks, that kind of thing. Almost like using LUTs, although you can't import LUTs yet, but I've been told that will be coming in a future version. So if you're needing to use LUTs in your work, then LumaFusion for mobile filmmaking is the way to go right now. Beyond the color presets though, the parameters that you can adjust to do custom looks is pretty extensive. It reminds me again, a lot of Premiere Pro. And if you create a custom look that you'd like to save and easily add to multiple clips, then you can do that by creating a preset of your own. Create the preset, give it a name, and then it is there in your presets. And you can quickly and easily apply it to whatever clip you want. The audio panel is pretty basic, but for this kind of editing, it has all the controls you would really need. 
You can mute and unmute tracks. You can raise and lower the volume. And you can change the type, which is where more advanced features come out. If you change it to voice, then you have a lot more choices, including reducing the background noise, which worked remarkably well here, I thought. I don't have the actual sound recorded, but I was surprised at how good it sounded once it was denoised. And then if you change it to music as the type, you have the auto duck feature, which is great. That can save you tons of time mixing audio between a voiceover and a music track. The transform panel feels pretty complete. Most controls that you would think would be in there are there. Cropping, scaling, rotation, that kind of thing. No 3D support or anything like that. But I do really like how you can easily get in and out of the different effects panels versus in LumaFusion, you actually go to a different screen. This is a little bit of a simpler, more intuitive, I would say, user interface. So now you're happy with your edit and it's time to share with the world. So you would go to export. And this was a bit confusing to me. You can shoot 4K, you can import 4K, but you cannot export 4K. So yeah, this is a version one app and 4K is coming very soon, I've been told, but that's definitely something to keep in mind right now. And a big advantage that LumaFusion has over Adobe Rush at this point in time. Exporting this 30 second piece took about 45 seconds, so slower than real time. This is sped up 500%. It seemed a little bit on the slow side to me, especially because it's just 720p video with almost no effects on it. But it did export successfully and it saves it to the camera roll on the iPad. And then you can also upload it to whatever social media platform you prefer. Now one of the coolest things about Creative Cloud is that it syncs everything across all devices that are on your account. So after I did this editing on my iPad, I opened up my iPhone and there it was. The project was right there, the exact edits and the media. So you're out in the field shooting, you do a quick edit on your iPhone or your iPad and then you come back to your office and it's automatically on your computer or vice versa. You do something at your office and then it's automatically out on your iPhone or your iPad. That's really nice. The files sync in the background. Then you can access them by going to your Creative Cloud account on your desktop. Open up the folder and here are the files I was editing on my iPad and on my iPhone now on the desktop. All seamlessly done in the background too. And that leads to the next thing which is using Adobe Premiere Rush on your desktop. You can do that or you can open them in Premiere Pro. You have to be running CC 2019 which I am not doing yet. So this is a tutorial from Adobe. And again all the media and all the edits are right there. I can definitely see this being a really nice offline and then online editing solution for certain projects. There are definitely things missing in this first version of Adobe Premiere Rush. There's no speed ramps, there's no slow motion, there's no fast motion, you can't import LUTs, you can't export 4K, but I'm told most of these will be added in the future. So this all begs the question, is this right for you? If you're already a Creative Cloud subscriber, it's a no brainer. It comes free with that subscription or if you have an a la carte Premiere Pro subscription, it comes with that too. If you do not subscribe to those services, then I would say no, I would not get this software right now. Currently it's $10 a month and as compared to buying LumaFusion for a one-time $20 payment, that too is a no brainer. Stick with LumaFusion. I'm very bullish on this app though. This is a great start and I look forward to seeing where it goes in the future. But I definitely won't be deleting my LumaFusion app anytime soon. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.